Welcome to my basement, everybody. Hope you are all doing great. Happy hump day. Happy Wednesday. It is Wednesday, right? Yes. It's tough to keep track of the days sometimes because it's all a blur at this time of year. Hope you're doing well. Hope you can hear me all right. I've got a bunch of great people in the chat today. The best chat on the internet. Uh, TM. Actually, I should uh, tweet that out. Give me a second here. I'm just going to say that we are live right now. I forgot to do that. That was one of the things on my checklist that I forgot. One second here. So I'm just going to let people know um, that we are live on the Twitters. One second. Uh, Here we go. We are live. Live. It's alive. Boom. I uh, hope everybody's having a great day. How, how's, how's it going there? Alpha Cat and a Noop Tour. Haven't seen you uh, before. Uh, well, for a while, maybe. Welcome. Yes, we've been doing uh, live streams on a pretty regular basis because there's so much stuff coming out. Like this thing. This freaking thing that is like my uh, co-host. It's so big. It's I, I, I do like it. I know a lot of people hate the look of the PlayStation 5. I actually do like it. It looks really nice beside uh, the the old TV there. It's like, yes, I'm playing next-gen gaming right now. I really dig it. Uh, Kevin Smitty is in the house. James Patrick Patrick, two Patricks for the price of one. Uh, Goku, the Duder, uh, Mr. Mass Produce, uh, and Mr. Mass Produce was first. So you know what that means. This rundown is dedicated to you. All right, this news happened a little while ago, but it's still really cool. Super Mario Brothers 3 uh, just broke a record. I guess it was a sealed and uh, certified copy. I don't know if it was a rare print or something like that, uh, but this was a big deal. It is the most expensive video game in history. I think it sold for about $160,000 US. So a highly sought after, highly collectible item. Obviously, one of the best Nintendo Entertainment System games ever released. You could play it on the Wii U. You could play it on the 3DS. That's where this footage is from. But of course, uh, it's also part of the uh, uh, Super Mario All-Stars cartridge for the Super Nintendo was enhanced, and that's available on the uh, on the Switch right now that you can play it right now. But we should talk about this uh, collectability as it pertains to video game cartridges. Holy crap, things are uh, getting crazy. You know, I've been uh, retro gaming quite a bit over the last little while, playing a lot of stuff on my analog Mega SG and my analog super nt and i've gone off and purchased cartridges and i've spent some money i spent 85 bucks for teenage mutant ninja turtles hyperstone heist for the sega genesis it was one like i i really want to play that because i loved uh teenage mutant ninja turtles uh, turtles in time for the super nintendo and it's kind of like a variation on that uh different games but super fun and I think I paid 60 bucks for the Super Nintendo game, but I ended up paying $85 Canadian, uh, which is I don't know, like 40 bucks US. Uh, but I spent some dough on the thing, and I don't regret it because you know it's a, it's a sought after thing, and I'm a collector clearly of superhero video game cartridges, uh, and so it was one that I wanted. But I, yeah, I cannot believe how expensive things are, and I, I've never picked up a, a copy of The Punisher because it's so pricey. Uh, Rocket Knight is super expensive. Uh, but none are getting into the hundreds of thousands, or very few are getting into the hundreds of thousands of dollars. Um, it is a pretty crazy thing to see, uh, but clearly it's one for you know mainstream news to cover and report on, and uh, it looks good for the... Um, uh, the, the the companies that the auction houses and stuff, the companies that kind of specialize in sort of beefing up hype around things like that. But uh, I think, you know, as we veer more and more into digital, these items, these collectible items are going to increase in value and it's going to open up a couple of different avenues. I think we're going to see auction houses really pay attention, just like they did with comic books, to uh, the physicalized media around video games. And um, there's going to be a lot of interesting collector uh, locations around the world, maybe museums or... um, uh, boutique stores or something like that. Uh, but then there will also be a lot of new limited run type companies. It won't, I think there's like three or four out there right now, like I am 8-Bit and a couple of others um, that are uh, making specific cartridges in uh, new quantities. I think we're going to see an uh, adoption of that as a new marketplace. And it won't be huge, but it will be enough to you know build a cool little business from. Uh, and then, uh, you know, I think we're going to see a lot of these secondhand stores um, maybe 
consolidate a little bit. We might even see EB Games really kind of, once we can all go back to stores in 2021, um, really kind of lean into this uh, collector marketplace. Uh, because I think we're, you know, as I've said quite a bit over the last couple of years, I think we are moving quickly towards subscribing to libraries. Um, you know, it just feels like it makes a lot of sense out there. Uh, but things are very pricey. And I see that uh, uh, people are putting in the amount of money they spent. <laughs> James Patrick. Patrick spent 120 bucks for an original Paperboy NES. Amazing. And I spent 100 bucks for importing X-Men versus Street Fighter from Japan. I don't own a Saturn or a Polymega. Um, I paid 150 bucks for, this is Blair Farrell, for uh, Marvel vs. Capcom 2 on the PS2 at the start of the lockdown. Uh, and then I paid th 300 bucks for an HDMI N64 mod. Yes, you know, like, uh, I wonder how long this uh, goes on until the, you know, the, the companies recognize that there's money to, like the bigger companies like Xbox and PlayStation and Nintendo realize that there's a, uh, you know, clearly a marketplace for this retro offering. And it would only like take like the turn of a knob for these guys because they're so you know integrated with the manufacturing process and they've got all of the these technology uh, companies throughout their verticals and divisions and stuff. If they ever wanted to make um, uh, you know like very accurate HDMI recreations of classic consoles um, that deliver on every sort of memory and promise that we have with all kinds of different resolution offerings and filter offerings. If they ever wanted to do that, it would be like, boop. Whereas all of these little startup businesses out there like Analog and Polymega and you know, tons of companies out there have tried to figure out how do we crack into this and, and we'll, you know, reverse engineer everything and we'll emulate stuff uh, and, and unless we can, you know, figure out the FPGA kind of scenario and we'll get that out tomorrow market. But if Nintendo, Sony, and Microsoft wanted to do that, they sure could. Um, and they could partner with a company like Sega and deliver on a lot of their classic stuff, even, you know, snap up Atari offerings if they really wanted to do that. Uh, but it is interesting and it's incredibly important. And I think it's so crazy that we only get little bits and pieces of access to content, you know, uh, on an easy basis. Like we can all go scouring through eBay and Craigslist and Facebook ma uh, Marketplace. Not that I have. Oh, yeah, I have uh, for some of these classic carts and stuff or go to swap meets or, or um, you know, toy shows and things, all of which are really fun. But if Nintendo and Sony and, my, and Microsoft wanted to, like, snap up that market and rip it away from a lot of these other startups that are out there, they could easily do that. And if they offered them at a subscription price, even Google and Amazon, right? Like if they wanted to go strong at that marketplace and access that nostalgia, but also the value of that classic software, they certainly could. Um, and I, honestly, I think that would only drive up the price on some of the, uh, the, the physical first editions of some of these carts, because then it would uh, bring a lot more attention to this classic library. Uh, and, and especially if it was one of these mainstream or much larger companies, a lot more people would suddenly go, oh, my God, retro gaming is like we all know. Everybody here knows how awesome uh, retro gaming is. And yes, that is a Vectrex pathetic earthling. Uh, oh, I, I got a Vectrex for five uh, and five games for eight dollars. See, that's the way it used to be. I went till uh, Milton Bradley got out of the video game business, uh, and I bought this Vectrex at uh, a company called Eaton's, which was an old department store. I'm just closing my mail app so I don't get any in, in, uh, notifications there. Um, and that's the way it used to be, but of course things have changed radically over the years, and people have really kind of figured out how to work the system with, uh, with regards to scarcity. Uh, I think that is going to be... Um, uh, subsumed by a larger entity. And they're going to figure out something. I don't think they're going to piecemeal it out. I don't think they're going to charge you like Nintendo has been doing and to a degree PlayStation has been doing, um, you, you know, five bucks for classic games. I don't think they're going to do that. And I, I think they're going to put a monthly price on it and the library uh, availability is going to blow our minds. And it's probably going to happen within the next two or three years. And it might be somebody that we don't expect. I don't know, have any insider knowledge on this, but uh, you know that there are very smart... 
uh, analysts and accountants out there that are kind of digging into this data right now, and they're trying to figure out exactly how much they can monetize all this stuff for. But when you see an auction house come out there and say that Super Mario Brothers 3 sold for $160,000, it's like, what? Um, suddenly, all of that classic stuff becomes very, very important and uh, could be a huge profit center. And uh, speaking of profit centers, boy, does Square Enix need Avengers to become one. Um, there are new reports right now that have been translated from, uh, you know, investor documents and, and uh, some of the higher ups at Square Enix in Japan talking about the cost and the fact that this game, this very expensive game, Avengers, has not started to recoup on its budget. It cost a lot of money, but also it's cost a lot of money to market it. And of course, it's an ongoing experience. And the, uh, the player rates have dropped substantially. I don't think that's big news or a big surprise to anybody out there. Um, and so a lot of people have uh, moved away from this, but this is a games as service, and they're going to have all kinds of drops and new content and stuff. This is the Kate Bishop uh, model that we're looking at right here. She's got her own little storyline. I honestly can't wait to get into it, and I feel like they should have almost had... I don't know, like the the initial story and then three other stories ready to go like once every two weeks or something. We, You know, these companies know when they give us a single player campaign and a story, the first, the heat seekers out there, the ones that are like, oh my God, I got to play this. We burn through these stories in two weekends at, at most. A lot of people do it in a, in a couple of days. And if Square Enix and Crystal D, all of this is much easier said than done. And I, you know, I totally recognize the amount of work that has gone into this. And truthfully, I really enjoyed playing this game and I want to go back to it. And I can't wait for the next gen updates, but I also can't wait for more content. And that's what Square Enix and Crystal D have to deliver now. So they've got the bones of a cool game with lots of different characters that we can play as. And the mechanics are really solid and fun. And they're going to drop new characters like Kate Bishop and give us new storylines. Kate Bishop is uh, uh, she's kind of like the uh, uh, the understudy of Hawkeye. She becomes the new Hawkeye. And so Hawkeye is interwoven in here as well. And there was a really nice bit in this trailer here. Uh, we we uh, take a look into the future and we see this uh, potential look at a, uh, a future Hulk, which is uh, really, really cool. And it, it is exciting because what they've got with this game is... Uh, you, you know, the the sort of central hub to be able to web out in a bunch, and speaking of web, Spider-Man's going to be a part of this in 2021 as well. Uh, but they're going to be able to web out and, play, and we'll be able to play and see all kinds of Marvel stories, which is exactly what I want. But I feel like the... Uh, you know, the scheduling should have been the first thing that was rectified. We should have had these new story drops and the character drops happen every month like clockwork and maybe that was the plan and maybe had the pandemic not happened this year and it forced all of these developers to go work from home which is part of what square enix was messaging is that it became much more difficult to finish this game and get it out there look at how cool this looks i mean she looks amazing and these are some of the best like these are some of the best costumes that i've seen out of the offerings from uh uh, uh the marvel avengers stuff i i, I wouldn't want any of the um uh, I didn't really want many of the costumes on the other characters, but here's that that uh, future Hulk that I see, and he's in front of all of these, uh, uh, you know, broken pieces of equipment from the other Avengers and stuff. Um, I, you know, I, I want to play this and I want to come back to it and I definitely want to see some of the enhancements as we go to next gen. Um, I just feel bad for Square Enix and for Crystal D that they weren't able to realize what they wanted to with this game. Clearly it's important to them and clearly it's important to Marvel games, but we're all talking about Spider-Man. We're all talking about Spider-Man Spider from 2018 right now on the PlayStation 5. Insane. And Miles Morales, you know, no one's really talking about Marvel's Avengers and that's a that's a ball drop man that's uh that's really unfortunate and the, it it sucks cuz there's so much good work in there but maybe not quite enough to uh come down like Thor's hammer and get us all to go oh my god you know we we all have to drop everything and stay with this game and that is the challenge again and again and again with these games as service uh uh, pro, you know, products and projects that, that uh, keep getting greenlit. It's like this hard lesson that everybody has to kind of deal with. Uh, Goku says, to be fair, she became Hawkeye before teaming up with him. Young Avengers Volume 1. Awesome. Thank you. I'm actually most 
familiar with Kate Bishop because I, I haven't had time to read everything th- from both universes. I've read tons of Batman and now tons of Spider-Man and some awesome Iron Man books and awesome Hoth books and stuff. But I did read Matt Fraction's take on Hawkeye and Kate Bishop is in that and she's awesome. And that storyline is excellent. And I think they borrowed... Uh, a little bit from that, but also the the Hawkeye TV show is going to borrow from the Matt Fraction stuff, which is so great. And uh, Goku says, I'm the biggest young Avengers fan. He's got me. That's awesome. <laughs> uh, Blade Blur says, would love to see Yuri Lowenthal Spider-Man in this. I think that's happening, Blade Blur. They're going to they're gonna, uh, merge the universes, uh, but only on PlayStation 5, right? That's the thing. Got me, that angered a lot of people. Um, I want another game with Kamala. Uh, Kamala. Yeah, she was fantastic. Um, yeah, K- Kamala Khan is unbelievable in the Avengers. One of the most enjoyable characters. Honestly, they're all super fun to play. And I hope uh, that was from Mike Dodd, by the way. I hope that that all comes together. And and um, uh, you, you know, it sucks that they've got to uh, you build the road as the as people are already on the road. And I know there, there's a lot of people that are unhappy with it. Um, but you know, honestly, I think there's dozens and dozens and hours uh, of hours of fun in there. There's repetition for sure. There's grinding for sure. If you're an achievement collector or if you, uh, want to level up all your character, you're going to beat up a lot of robots and I could see that becoming mind numbing. Um, and it's weird in terms of power balances as well that a bunch of little tiny robots can affect Hulk at all. We've talked about all of this. But it's a cool game. Like, it's it's a really cool game, and it's well made. It just needs it needs more meat. It just needs to be bigger and better. Uh, all right, over in another Disney universe, the Star Wars universe, The Mandalorian has been crushing it. I'm going to talk a little bit about Mandalorian uh, Chapter 12 after this. Uh, but... Um, Uh, Giancarlo Esposito, who plays uh, Moff Gideon, the big bad in The Mandalorian, was recently in Entertainment Weekly talking a a little bit about uh, wrapping up season uh, two, uh, where we just got a nice brief glimpse at him at the end of chapter 12, but also that he's going to be a bigger part of chapter uh, of uh, us. uh, season three, and uh, he's an amazing actor, and it's incredible to see him become this like bad guy in so many things because he's such a nice guy. <laughs> I, I've, I had the pleasure of meeting him uh, about, a, about ten years ago or something like that, and he was just such a wonderful guy. And uh, he's such a good performer, and he commands the screen. But he is being used a lot. He's in the new Far Cry, of course. He's in Better Call Saul and Breaking Bad, uh, and I think it was Breaking Bad that really put him on everybody's. Uh, radar out there and everybody wants to work with him so it's understandable Uh, and he's a a great presence in the Mandalorian and we saw something really cool at the end of chapter 12 which kind of uh, is kind of connected connective tissue to old LucasArts video games which was cool but also um, a little bit of what the prequels were establishing uh, and I, I always feel that Dave Filoni is is like the world's greatest apologist, you know, the, the person that kind of legitimized what George Lucas was trying to do with the prequels. And I don't mean to offend anybody. I know a lot of people out there love the prequel films. Um, uh, I, I loved elements of them, but they were certainly uh, problematic for me in a bunch of different ways. But Filoni is like going back and figuring a lot of stuff out and uh, making... You know, with the teams that he's put on, like the the actors and the directors and the uh, the the visual effects artists, just making something so iconic with the Mandalorian. Uh, I honestly cannot believe that I get to watch this every single week. You know, I feel like it's one of the biggest gifts to me personally, and I don't know if you guys feel that way too. Any Star Wars uh, lifers out there? It just feels like. You know, they read my mind and said, well, here's the show that you wanted. <laughs> you know, it's really impressive work. And, um, you know, that that brings me into Chapter 12. I was going to talk a little bit about it on Friday after I watched it, but we uh, we I, I had to postpone that stream. Um, and uh, I watched it with my kid again. So my kid and I, and this is a new thing for this season because she hadn't seen it at all in Season 1. But we watched it together. We were holding hands. We were freaked out. Uh, for a couple of moments. It gets incredibly exciting. I did feel like it was the, kind of the weakest of the first four episodes that we've seen so far in uh, season two until we got to a point, uh, you know, and what happens, of course, in this this show, in this episode is uh, uh, Cara Dune and uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, Reef Karga 
uh, played by Carl Weathers, who directed this episode, which is really cool. They go into a, um, a, a an imperial base, and they're trying to in, infiltrate and get some information. And they've been told that it doesn't have a lot of uh, imperial forces in there, or there are lots of resistance. You know, they're not going to encounter a lot of resistance, but of course they do. And they get chased out of there. They get into a firefight. Uh, there's uh, the, you know great blaster effects and stuff. And apparently there's a guy in a green t-shirt and jeans that was caught off camera. I think you can see him in that photo right there. Actually, let me see. Let me go back. I think he's in that picture. <laughs> That's that's him right there. He's on the side of the picture. <laughs> oh my god, that's hilarious. Yeah, so he's in the he's in the show. Uh, if you if you do a freeze frame, uh, but it it was so exciting their escape from this base. I couldn't believe it. They get into a uh, uh, into a speeder and careen down a mountain, and then we get to see these speeder bikes, which seem to be uh, almost like co-stars in uh, the Mandalorian. I mean, Filoni knows how awesome the speeder bike sequence was in uh, Return of the Jedi, so he keeps using them, and he keeps getting these speeder bike uh, stormtroopers uh, in the show. And there's this epic sequence where they're all racing down a mountain and stuff's just just happening and you can't believe what you're seeing it's so freaking cool and uh mando has to pull off all of these insane maneuvers with um uh the razor crest which is you know the the maybe the second coolest hunk of junk in the galaxy at this point you know we've seen it be almost demolished and rebuilt and pieced back together and little chips falling off of it. Uh, but he's a damn good flyer, and we get to see that, which is really fun. We also get to see Baby Yoda interact with some uh, other kids who also find him weird and adorable. And uh, we get to see uh, Baby Yoda barf in, in uh, Chapter 12. Um, and it was uh, charming and funny and thrilling and beautiful um, I think it's the weakest so far of the four episodes this season, but this season is so spectacular and such a gift. Um, I'm going to score it when I get to the end of the season. I think we're halfway through now. I think they're only doing eight episodes a season. Uh, but holy mackerel, The Mandalorian is just killing it. It's uh, the number one reason to have Disney Plus as far as I'm concerned. But I'm becoming more and more impressed as I keep digging into the Disney Plus library. There's so much stuff in there. And one thing that's really cool is that a lot of the content that they've posted also comes with extras, behind-the-scenes interviews and stuff. And you know I love that kind of thing. Um, and I also love the fact that they made a whole series for The Mandalorian. I don't know if you guys have watched this, but they made a documentary series called Gallery where they dig into season one and they interview all of the directors and writers and visual effects people and the actors. They have a lot of behind the scenes footage of being on stage in the volume where they've crafted these uh, you know, these LED screens, these large screens that they project environments that are crafted in the Unreal video game engine to in, in kind of with 3D technology. So as actors cross frame, the uh, backgrounds pivot in sync with what's happening in, in the performance. And so much of The Mandalorian, almost all of it is shot indoors, but it's so effectively uh, you know, representative of, uh, it's so effectively representative of outdoor shots. It blows your mind, especially because the screens behind the actors, particularly Mando with his shiny helmet, reflects all of that data. So it really feels like that light source is there, whether it's the desert or, uh, you know, they're at a some crazy cantina or something like that. All of that is just so well embellished it's so well put together but the behind the scenes stuff on mando is great and uh the show itself just sensational just love it um all right we've got a uh, an xbox uh holiday gift guide to get to and uh, then we're going to play a little bit of this playstation 5 but right now it's time for this day in everything cool Welcome to This Day and Everything Cool for November 25th. On this day in 1994, game maker Rare reinvented one of Nintendo's oldest and most beloved characters because Donkey Kong Country was released on the Super Nintendo worldwide. Rare had impressed Nintendo with their 1991 side-scroller Battletoads, which was released on their previous console, the NES, but had graphics and audio that made it look more like an SNES game. Nintendo wanted to see what Rare could do with the new hardware of the SNES, so they invested in Rare and helped them develop new rendering software that could create limited 3D character sprites and environments on the system. 
system. Rare used the new software to start making a side-scroller starring Donkey Kong, who up to that point had been portrayed as a villain and gave him a new, more friendly appearance, as well as his own supporting characters like his sidekick, Diddy Kong. As for the game itself, Rare had initially begun making it just as challenging as the notoriously difficult Battletoads, but at Nintendo's insistence, they retooled it to make it less challenging and more accessible. This helped give the game more mainstream appeal, and when it was released, it became one of the biggest titles for the Super Nintendo, selling more than half a million copies in its first month. Rare followed it up with two direct sequels on the SNES and used the same 3D rendering software to create another SNES title, the fighting game Killer Instinct. A few years later, they began releasing their first true 3D games on Nintendo's next system, the N64. Oh man, Donkey Kong Country Classic. We've had a lot of Nintendo things happen around the last few days with uh, our uh, daily This Day and Everything Cool. I'm so glad that we we put all of those pieces together. Uh, I, I did a lot of that w work with Blake, um, and uh, I miss him very much. And in, in this pandemic, that's one, been one of the, the crappiest things for me is that I don't get to work with my man Blake uh, every day. We miss each other. I saw him like last week or something like that, and uh, um, he's doing well. Um, and uh, next year we'll figure out a way to uh, to collaborate and get things back to you know the way that we want to. I I also miss the live events that we were putting together in uh, the Vancouver Film School Cafe, which uh, was a real joy, and it was always fantastic to see people come and join us there and have guests live in the studio with me. Um, so we'll figure that all out. Um, but you know, good things are happening, right? The vaccines are being disseminated. Next year is going to be amazing. Next year is going to make up for the BS of 2020. Okay, you guys, let's talk a little bit about the holiday. I'm going to start that again. Okay, you guys, let's talk about Xbox and uh, put together a holiday gift guide for you. There's a lot of players out there that have uh, got an Xbox or have got a uh, an Xbox One or are looking to pick up an Xbox Series X or S this holiday season, or maybe you've already got one and you're going to gift it to somebody, which makes you an extremely generous person. Um, and I wanted to put together a bunch of ideas for Xbox players out there, but Xbox is weird, man. Xbox is weird, and I'm looking at you, Phil Spencer. It, you know, I, I was putting in the titles on the uh, graphics that I put together for this piece, and it's like, well, it's, is Xbox One or Xbox One X, One S, Series X, Series... It, and they all play the game. They all play the same games, which is nuts. And you can call that a problem with the Series X and the Series S because there's no Halo Infinite and there's no exclusive for this platform. I don't even think Halo Infinite was going to be exclusive, right? It was going to be playable right on back to the classic Xbox One, which came out in 2013. Um, so I just said Xbox. And the other thing, of course, is that Xbox is all about backwards compatibility. So you could actually play original Xbox games very well on an Xbox Series X or One X or One S, it's all very confusing. So I've tried to simplify this whole segment and call it just Xbox. But the other thing that makes it confusing, and I, I was almost thinking tongue in cheek that this is what I should just do. I should just come out and say, oh, you've got an Xbox player you want to get a gift for this year. Game Pass. Good night! Because that's kind of all you need to do. You just need to get somebody Game Pass, and they've got dozens of games to play for forever and ever, right? And Xbox is constantly changing up the uh, the library. They just added the EA Play stuff in there. Uh, so there are tons of games. And so step one, if you're buying something for an Xbox player out there, get them Xbox Game Pass. Um, it, you know, it's filled with all of the first party that, that uh, Microsoft spends money on. So Sea of Thieves and uh, Flight Simulator and Gears of War and Minecraft stuff. Uh, it has so many games. It'll take you forever to play everything. Yakuza games, No Man's Sky, Destiny, and then uh, Final Fantasy. And they've added all of... Uh, uh, you know, classic EA games like Fight Night Champion. You can also play the Game Pass stuff on a PC. You just have to log into your account. And I think it works the same way with xCloud. So if you've got the uh, Xbox, uh, I haven't tried this yet, but if you've got the Xbox account on your phone or whatever, you can log in and you can stream your games. Um, I think that's all part of Game Pass, if I'm not mistaken. But it is unquestionably the best deal in video games. And if you want to be a very generous and very smart and also very savvy 
gift giver for an Xbox player out there. Hook them up with Game Pass and they're going to be fine. Uh, now, of course, I also wanted to do what I did with uh, Nintendo and with PlayStation. I created a list of five essentials, kind of my first five, but I think every one of these is part of Game Pass. Uh, but let's take a look at um, five essential games that I would say would be perfect for Xbox One. Um, I think Xbox One plays all of these. Xbox One X and One S, I think for sure do, and Series S and X do as well. But let's take a look at these right now. These are essential games for Xbox. Number five, I've got uh, um, Titanfall 2, which I have looked at on the Series X, and it is spectacular. It literally took my breath away. It already was a beautiful game, but it loads super fast, and it's so fluid and so beautiful, and all of the HDR that they've uh, augmented on the Series X kicks in on this thing. And I was like, <gasps> I was just shocked at how gorgeous it was. It's my favorite first-person shooter of all time, to be frank. You get to jump into these giant robots. Titanfall 2 is a masterpiece. Number four, I would say The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt, which is backwards compatible. And I think CD Projekt Red, if they haven't already, are doing some enhancements to this game if you're going to get it on uh, Series X. Don't know about Series S as well, but it, you, you know what? It's still one of the best-looking games in the last decade. It's so uh, it's just filled with content. There's a maturity about it. Um, clearly, there's a hit TV show based on the thing. There is a lot of meat in with The Witcher 3. You're going to love that game, and whoever gets it will too. The same can be said for the Xbox 360 version of Red Dead Redemption. I had Red Dead Redemption 2 on the list, but I realized that I love this game more. I think this game is uh, its perfect, and it actually, this is a 720p video here, so it doesn't highlight what it looks like on a Series X or a One X. It looks incredible. On the Series X, of course, all the HDR kicks in, and it's so crisp and so clean, so backwards compatible uh, juggernaut. It's amazing. And speaking of backwards compatible, Ability. Rare Replay is one of the best singular game deals out there because it has 30 different games that Rare made from all eras. So you're going way back to the NES days. Uh, there's arcade games on here. There's uh, Xbox 360 titles. And all of them have value. All of them have a quirky kind of sense of humor. And it's like a history lesson as well. You get to dive deep into all of the sort of creative genius that Rare supplied. And the other one uh, is Halo uh, Master Chief. Uh, collection, which I know has had some problems. They've had some issues with updates and, and uh, you know, balancing with multiplayer and everything, but you cannot deny the amount of value in here. And also um, the uh, up res and the, uh, the sort of the remastering that uh, Microsoft and 343 have put into these classic Halo adventures and experiences. So much fun to re-experience. I did check uh, some of this out on the Series X and the games are gorgeous still and uh, they're uh, tremendously enjoyable to play. They're dated for sure and, and first person shooters have kind of evolved, no pun intended, in lots of different ways, but Halo Master Chief Collection is hard to refute. It is a super great pickup for Xbox players out there. But but again, it's part of Game Pass. So if you get them that Game Pass, uh, you know, subscription, they're going to be able to uh, jump in and play those games right away. All right. Now, I've also created a, uh, a more current list of 10 different titles that came out in uh, 2020. A lot of these games you can also play on other platforms. Um, and I, kept, there are, I don't think there really are any exclusives in this list. Uh, except for what Microsoft has published. Uh, but there, Microsoft is also publishing on other platforms now. It's all getting very confusing. Uh, but these are 10 great games that you can play on Xbox platforms. And number 10 is uh, actually Gears of War Tactics is a terrific game. I played this on PC with an Xbox controller, so it was very close to playing it on an Xbox. It's been enhanced for the Xbox Series X. It's a great tactical uh, turn-based strategy experience, and there's always been a uh, an element of strategy in Gears of War with, uh, you know, its sort of uh, cover shooter mechanics and its flanking mechanics translates very well to a tactical shooter uh, or tactical uh, strategy game. That is a blast of a title. Uh, we were looking at this just yesterday. This is uh, Yakuza Like a Dragon, which is an RPG. It's not a, uh, uh, you know, sort of a, a brawler uh, fused with a bunch of crazy minigames. The minigames 
games are here, and also the old classic Sega arcade games are here. The sense of humor is here. The wackiness, the people dancing in in uh, you know uh, 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 diapers and underwear and stuff. Uh, but it's just a really really fun game. Yakuza Like a Dragon rocks. So does Mafia Definitive Edition. I was playing this earlier. I reviewed it li- earlier this year. Uh, I love this freaking game. I, it's definitely not the most. Uh, current of the open world action adventure titles out there. It's been surpassed by several other open world games, but there is this quality to this game that just really draws me in. This 30s uh, aesthetic, this crime caper, the storytelling, wonderful game with great enhancements. It's a beautiful, beautiful title. Number seven is uh, Watch Dogs Legion, and I think the thing that I enjoyed the most about this game is that it feels like a true toy box. You can uh, take control of tons of different characters. Basically, the city of London is your uh, uh, oyster. I think that's the phrase. You could just go in and be anybody, and so you can do all of these missions from a bunch of different perspectives, and it really gives it a toy-like sandbox quality that is incredibly engaging and addictive. Very well-made game. Super fun. Number six for me is Street Fight, uh, Streets of Rage 4, uh, which is also awesome whether you play it on PlayStation, PC, or Switch. Uh, this is a wonderful hand-drawn homage to the classic Sega uh, you know, brawlers uh, for the Genesis. And it evokes a lot of the, the sort of aesthetic as well from those classic days because you have these retro versions of these characters in there. But the mechanics are fun. Uh, you know, the super moves are a, a blast to pull off and it's a great cooperative experience as well. You can also get into competitive matches there too. And speaking of competitive, Doom Eternal was one of the most thrilling games of the year. There is a, a pretty cool story in here and there's lots of... Uh, um, uh, you know, embellishment in the in the Doom lore and lots of characters that you interact with. But this is primarily what you do in the game. You just blast at demons in the face and you stab them and you shoot them and you cut their heads off and uh, you are merciless and boy, is it fun. Doom Eternal rocks. Uh, and uh, also I would say that about Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 Plus 2, which feels a little bit more at home for me on a PlayStation platform. Uh, Because that's, I think, how we were introduced to Tony Hawk games uh, originally. But it's, you know, no discounting that it's an excellent fit as well on the Xbox platforms. Super fast, super fluid, all kinds of great pros in there. And one of the best soundtracks ever collab, you know, uh, put together for any video game. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 Plus 2 is awesome. And number three for me is uh, NBA 2K21. Uh, I'm talking about the next-gen version kind of specifically here, so you need the Xbox Series X to really get the most out of this game. Uh, but it is absolutely stunning. Beautiful, beautiful facial animations and, of course, the sweat mechanics and physics that they always have in there. The, there's real true emotion that you get to see as plays are happening in real time. It really takes you into the passion of basketball, which is why I love that game so much. Uh, but, you know, the traditional 2K21 is really good as well. This is Ori and the Will of the Wisps, and this is a staggeringly beautiful Metroidvania kind of title. Uh, it's a sequel to the first Ori um, and uh, I think the Blind Forest. Both incredible, beautiful games. Both have been enhanced, actually, for the Xbox series uh, platforms, I think, for Series S and X. And um, b- uh, stunning music, stunning environments, gorgeous games. And I say that as well about uh, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, which Xbox came in on the marketing uh, for. They partnered with Ubisoft because they kind of lost their, their huge exclusive with Halo. So if you've seen Assassin's Creed, uh, Valhalla being advertised in a lot of places, you've seen that Xbox logo pop up, and it's really kind of been tied to it. I've seen some of the tearing that uh, Digital Foundry has uh, been talking about, and it's, it's kind of disconcerting, but I know Ubisoft will patch it. That doesn't discount how gorgeous this game is or addictive it is. The loops are fun. The exploration is crazy cool, and the storytelling is so well embellished and, and um, uh, so tuned it's a it's an essential pickup for sure. A wonderful, wonderful, wonderful game, and I think it's one of the biggest hits that uh, Ubisoft has had in the Assassin's Creed franchise. And I think it's justified. It's an awesome pickup. So there you go. Ten uh, games that came out from 2020. I would love to hear in the comments below or in the chat right now some games that you think would be uh, you know an equally good fit on Xbox platforms, uh, and also five essential titles.
titles, and I know you've got some other ideas in there. So let them, let me know. Let me have it. All the other ideas that you have. Uh, but happy shopping this this holiday, and I hope uh, the Xbox players in your life uh, are very happy with whatever you pick up for them. Okay, there you go. That's. Um, Three holiday gift guides down. Uh, it's a lot of fun to put those together. It's kind of like uh, I'm trying to keep up with the with the edits that I've put together around um, the the uh, the video graphics and stuff like that. But it's uh, it's a lot of fun. Uh, when you do the Xbox separate video, you've got PS5 in the background. Well, you know what? That's EP, and uh, that's from uh, D Side Botham. That's what Electric Playground is. I've told this story before. Um, you know, when I started EP as a TV show, I would go and interview, or I wouldn't interview, I'd go and have meetings with PlayStation and Nintendo and Xbox, and they would, you know, find out that we've got broadcasters that are interested and, and want to pick up the show, and I, we needed sponsors. So I would go for uh, sponsor discussions and meetings, and invariably, someone in marketing from uh, some of these companies would say, well, why would we want to be a partner with you if you've got our competitor in the, the show? And I, say, I, I would say, look, the industry needs more people to care about it. We need to know, more people out there need to know different aspects of how this stuff gets made and you know where the this creative magic is is coming from. And it will completely lose that audience and the interest of people out there if we just tailor it and make it look like an infomercial. It has to feel like we are working with everyone and and spotlighting everybody out there. And everybody jumped on board, you know, with, uh, uh, and kudos to all of our partners over the years, but everybody jumped on board. We had Xbox and Sony and, and uh, uh, Nintendo as sponsors and EA and Konami and Activision, all, all of them supported EP at varying times throughout the years. And, uh, and it was because, and honestly, we lasted as long as we did in television, which nobody has ever been able to come close to that um, because we worked with everybody. You know, we, we were a voice around the entirety of the business. And that's incredibly important to me. And it's something that I maintain today. You know, with, I think it's really, really... Uh, and honestly, I think even today it would be easier if I said, you know what, EP is just going to focus on Nintendo stuff or EP is just going to focus on, um, you know, these three types of games. Like, let's say I, I love the superhero titles. Maybe this is just a superhero channel. And I could probably make, a, even in YouTube, a better business case for that than what I do. But I feel like it's important to have a discussion about all aspects of this creativity. And it feeds my soul that I do, you know. I would feel like... Um, I think I'd burn out if I was just talking about the same thing over and over again. And I honestly, I think talking about different strategies and the different the ways that different developers kind of approach their mandates and uh, the philosophies that they have with their you know relationships they create with their partners and their businesses and their uh, and their customers, um, it it's all intriguing to me, you know. And we're still kind of building up this medium. It's still defining itself and I think it's it's important to kind of come at it with uh, uh, as many interesting perspectives as you possibly can so that's the platform that EP kind of established and it was deliberate right from the beginning it wasn't called the electric PlayStation um, you know so along the way we've had all of these different machines beside us over the years and we've talked about every single thing along the way and uh, and now uh, you, you know what blows me away in 2020 and over the last few years is just how much it's come full circle and I keep talking about things that came out 25 years ago you know when I when I started in this business um, it's all been very surreal and then we're also in this huge remake loop right now too where we're seeing not just remasters, but like remakes of classic games like Tony Hawk and Final Fantasy this year. And I was around, I was there doing the reviews on these things when they first came out. And that is something you don't plan for, guys. That's something where it's like, holy crap, I've been doing this a while. They're remaking things that I still remember reviewing for the first time it came out, you know. Anyways, uh, good comment. And... Uh, uh, let's see what we got here. Charlie, oh, that was from uh, D Side Botham. Charlie Ward says, "Hi, Vic. Uh, got to the stream late. How's everything going? Everything's going well. Uh, getting a lot of um, uh, content together with these uh, with these holiday gift guides, uh, but it's super fun." 
Uh, my site is toast if Vic decides to do a superhero channel. Ha <laughs> Blair Farrell. <laughs> That's funny. Uncle Jay, we appreciate everything you've done, Vic, from watching you on, uh, on a tube TV to now watching you live on my phone. Isn't that insane, right? Is that progress? I, I don't know. <laughs> I'm late, too. I'm just glad you're here, you guys. Thank you, uh, Hip Hop Dan and Alpha Cat with the, with the heart emojis. I need to make more of those little things. I need, I, I need to make more of those things. Uh, Wasteland 3 versus XCOM 2. That would be pretty cool. When's the Apex Legends stream then, Vic? Cap Max Gaming. I streamed that when it came out. I, um, I would just be... I would just be a meat puppet out there. I, you know, if I was running around and it, people have stuck with that game, I'd just be, I'd be the target. I'd be like, everybody would be just chasing me and blasting at me. Uh, that, thank you, Captain Icy. I've never seen that name before. Are, are you uh, first time to the streams? Um, let me know if you are a first timer. Because we're starting to see that that happens on a kind of a regular basis. People find the stream somehow and find the channel. And it's, uh, it's super cool. It's super cool to see everybody. Delta Charlie, Vic, you live stream almost every day now, huh? Uh, I have been, um, mostly by necessity, because I've been doing all the editing and uh, doing, I'm one man banding a lot of stuff right now. So it, there's been so many things that have come out that I wouldn't be able to keep up if I was editing. I, I wouldn't have any time to play, right? And I have to play before I can talk about it. And then I have to, so this allows me a little more time, although the last few days have been kind of insane because uh, it's a lot of prep to kind of think through what is going to be in the gift guide and then find all the assets for it. And then I've been uh, posting uh, separate videos and, and adding music and stuff to the edit uh, for people that just want the gift guides. So I haven't had a ton of time to play. So we're going to play a little bit right now, right now actually. Uh, but I, I am really digging that I have the ability to kind of bounce between, um, you know, talking with you guys and also some of the uh, imagery that, uh, of things that I'm talking about and also throw to uh, uh, some pre-cut elements like the This Day and Everything Cool. It certainly got my mind spinning. I've been learning a lot about OBS in 2020. Um, so I don't know quite what the plan is going to be for 2021 uh but it's cool that i have this ability and uh i'm incredibly grateful that you guys are here helping me through all this and and uh honestly having the patience when the audio was wrong or i i cue up the wrong little piece of video or something like that uh i uh i i'm very grateful that you're there for that um but anyways uh vic you're a great journalist and ambassador for the gaming world chris c thank you Thank you. Um, that's very kind. I, you know, I, I've never not been aware of how fortunate I have been with this opportunity, you know, and I've tried to instill that with all of the people that I've worked with. Um, I knew how precious it was and how rare it was that we had a platform like this. And uh, I think everybody understood that. And I think a lot of you guys understood that too. I think you could see it in our work that we felt uh, grateful for um, the acceptance that we had through the industry and through television and through, um, you know, the audience and stuff out there. It's always been uh, uh, incredibly uh, heartwarming and we've always been very grateful. Have I heard of the Polycade? Mad Little Pixel just showed it off. It's in a modular system like Polymega, but an arcade style machine. I think I have. And thank you for the super chat, Charlie. This is the Polycade is uh, the Bushnell machine, if I'm not mistaken. Nolan Bushnell's son um, went off and started his own Kickstarter business. Well, they had an arcade system, and I think the Polycade is the new thing on it, but uh, their arcade idea was really cool. It was like this sort of uh, retro future looking, like, like an arcade from 1960 or something with, with uh, almost a... a uh, it was like a wall-mounted video game platform with a flat screen, but it looked like something out of Logan's Run, which is what Computer Space kind of looked like in the 70s. Computer Space was in Logan's Run, by the way. Uh, but it, I like I like the aesthetic, and you could totally see like the, the arcade of the future with all these sleek little, uh, you know, arcade machines uh, up on walls. And actually, uh, Devolver had a party at E3 a few years ago. And I, if I hope I'm getting all of this right, but Devolver had a, a party a few years ago, and they rented a bunch of those machines at their party. 
And they, the famously, the Devolver parties at E3 are always in the parking lot across the street from the LA Convention Center. But they had these covered areas where they had all of these, uh, these polycade machines. Uh, but I think that they've also entered now into the home uh, marketplace just this year, if I'm correct with that. Charlie, you can correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, but uh, I think it's cool that the Bushnells are keeping it in the family out there. Nolan Bushnell, by the way, he was in Vancouver last year, and I went to a thing and, and interviewed him in front of uh, uh, investors and an audience. But he has been working on games for Amazon Echo. Is that what it's called? The speaker thing? Alexa. Amazon Alexa uh, and Echo. Uh, but they're audio games. They're they're like video games. Well, they're not video games. They're audio games uh, where you tell the computer what to do based on audio um, record. So it's like a radio drama storytelling, and then it's a choose your own adventure that you're interacting with. It's so clever. And apparently they were quite successful when they launched. I think they've done one or two. Uh, but if you don't know who Nolan Bushnell is, you've got some Googling to do. A uh, guy basically commercialized the video game. We owe Nolan Bushnell a whole hell of a lot. Very, very interesting man. Holy cow, Vic, don't knock down your PS5 uh, with my hand. Yes, I know it feels... It's on the, it's on the base. This thing is well utilized. You guys want to see it, though. I know that these things are rare, um, but we did get some news today or yesterday that uh, Jim Ryan... Um, and the Sony team basically expressed that uh, this has been the biggest launch for any PlayStation platform ever, and uh, more machines are going to be out by the uh, uh, holidays, which is great news. And uh, incidentally, I love this machine. I've been having an awesome time playing games on it, and I, you know, kudos to Sony for not only getting the hardware out there, but some great software that really shows it off. And uh, uh, I think that's the one place where Xbox kind of dropped the ball. They have an amazing platform. I love the Series X as well. And to be honest, I was like, how is the PlayStation 5 going to compete with this really slick and and super fast, you know, load times and the quick resumes and all the uh, backwards compatibility? I thought, no way, you know, and, and I thought this thing was going to be pretty gimmicky. And I'm totally converted. Uh, this is an amazing platform, and the software is solid right out of the gate, and the backwards compatibility is pretty damn good. Um, and I love the Series X, too. I love the experience of playing on Series X, but it really needed at least one game that showed off exactly what it was all about, you know, that it was only there, you know. And I know, you know, the Xbox Credo right now is, like, anti-exclusive, uh, which I mostly am as well. Um, but in the, it's hard not to pit these things to get, you know, against each other. It's really hard. And I don't want to feed the fire or anything like that, but, uh, I, yeah, you know, suffice to say, super impressed with this and super impressed, super impressed with the hardware on series X, but yes, I want that game that is just like the baby for it. You know, the thing that really shows it off. And even if it was just Astrobot on this thing, um, that would have been great. You know, and and honestly, in some ways, it's Astrobot and it's Demon Souls, but the embellishments on Spider Man are like what? And then they did the remastered version as well. Um, and you know, it's not like it's a super deep library, but there's enough games in there. It's like holy crap, this was a great launch. Uh, okay, uh, and speaking of, I need a little bit of lemonade because I've been talking for a long time here. Halo Infinite was that baby, and I honestly. Yes, F the scalpers, right on, Leaf Fan B. Hopefully there'll be a lot more out there. I mean, basically what happened is uh, they, they developed bots, you know, and they just scoured everything. I saw somebody was talking to me yesterday. There was a guy that had picked up 3,500 PlayStation 5s or something, some scumbag out there. Um, it's awful. And, uh, I, you know, I, I think what happens now after this year, especially as everything has kind of shifted to digital, even purchasing physical stuff through the digital platforms, is there's going to be a, a much bigger move towards paying up front and basically paying for your place in line, uh, as opposed to just opening up a floodgate of pre-orders um, and maybe limiting things to, uh, I don't know, one IP address. I don't, I don't know. But they're, they're going to have learned a whole bunch of lessons this time for sure. Uh, John Boko, hate those type of people, never support them. 
Barcode teacup and a no person sales means the bot gets uh, bots get most of them for a long time to come. Barcode teacup. Yeah, it's. Uh, yeah, right. When you don't have a human being that is kind of supervising how these transactions are occurring, it, it, it can be exploited, can it? Uh, Daniel C., you can also hire people to wait in line for you. It's kind of gross. Okay. Uh, I know it's crappy. And, and it's honestly, it's tarnished the the glow of the launch of these things. And these have they, they have been very cool moments in this bleak year. You know, I keep I keep saying that, and I, I know it's true. Like there are happy people out there that manage to crack through the pre-order, you know, um, uh, floodgates there, the uh, the gauntlet of pre-ordering, and they were able to lock down either one of these or an Xbox Series X, and they're quite happy. But all of the scalpers and all of the uh, uh, constriction and constraint on on how people could actually pick up one of these things has definitely tarnished the glow. And both Sony and Microsoft are totally aware of that. Um, and it does suck. And I I feel for anyone that's watching this right now um, that either can't afford this, and I've said this before, um, or wanted to get one or still wants to get one and is having so much difficulty. I don't I don't mean to be coming off like I'm gloating or whatever uh, that I have one. I want to show it off. But the other thing that I've been saying too is that it, it won't hurt you to wait until 2021. You know, these are, are this this in particular had a really nice launch with great software right out of the gate. It will only improve as a value proposition in a, you know, a few months time. And if you come in later, you know, all uh, all the kinks are going to be worked out. The bugs are going to be worked out. That library is going to be better. And Sony's talking about a Game Pass uh, competitor as well. You know, so uh, let's say you get one of these things in, in the middle of 2021. You might have a an opportunity to get this in a, in a whatever PlayStation subscription thing is. And you've got access to way more software than you could ever imagine, you know. Um, but anyways... I want to celebrate, but I don't want to. I don't want to, you know, be a Cheshire cat here celebrating. Like mm, I got one, you know. Uh, but let's play some. Uh, all right, let's play. Uh, it does pay to wait, Leaf Fan B. Absolutely, in this business for sure. There is so much incredible software. There's so much retro software. Uh, you know, there's I, Red Dead Redemption. The first one is in my essentials list on the Xbox. Uh, buyer's guide for the holidays for this year for the holidays in 2020 you know i would go for red dead redemption over red dead redemption 2 i know some of you think i'm crazy but i i would i like that game more um all right uh playstation plus did come through with all the playstation 4 games okay i'm gonna go to my library of things that i have installed and you guys can tell me what you want to see i haven't played the nhl 94 game um, and this is not, it's like NHL 21 and NHL 94 are not enhanced for PlayStation 5. It's backwards compatible. So um, you guys let me know what you want me to play, what what you guys would like to see. Any Anything here. I've got Wipeout, No Man's Sky, more Astros Playroom. I could start it over from the very beginning. Cold War, but Cold War I deleted because I needed space on the hard drive. I deleted the uh, single-player campaign. I put Ape Escape. I haven't even opened that up for the PlayStation 2. <laughs> yeah, Ape Escape 2. Uh, so let's see. I got some votes for... Uh, I, I've got three votes for Ape Escape. Okay, that's crazy. Um, uh, let's see. I got one vote for Spider-Man 2018. I'm seeing a lot of Ape. I think we're doing Ape. We'll play Ape for a bit. And then um, <laughs> Eric J keeps voting for NHL 94. <laughs> okay, I want to see NHL 94 too. So we'll play uh, We'll play these classic games on this state-of-the-art new machine. Okay, here we go. Um, so I'll pop in Ape Escape. And uh, let's see what this is like. I haven't even seen this. Might experience unexpected game behavior while playing this PS4 game on your PS5. Okay, so have not seen this. <laughs> a $500 console to play Ape Escape. <laughs> oh, I gotta be the only person on YouTube playing Ape Escape right now. And I don't know how this is gonna look at all. 
portal player. I freaking love this machine. I love it. I and I wasn't convinced until I spent some real time with uh, Spider Man and Astro Bot and uh, Demon Souls. It's just it's amazing. They did a great job. I should have just played this right from the beginning. <laughs> Got this brand new game, everybody. <laughs> oh my god. Everybody was high that made this. <laughs> it's crazy. Okay. Behold the power of the PlayStation 5. I like that, Daniel C. PS5 is quiet. Not as quiet as the Series X. The Series X is unbelievably sleek like it just disappears into your space this is loud and proud in terms of the way it looks um, but it is also a little bit louder than the, the Series X way less loud than the uh, PlayStation 4 though um, can I change the camera we've got 16 by 9 let's turn this down just a bit and I don't think I can do invert, so I don't I don't know how I'm gonna how well I'm gonna be at Ape Escape 2. <laughs> it's still cracking up about how dumb this is. <laughs> I did see that Nosferatu talking about a um, where was that Arizona? They found a, uh, a monolith, very 2001 A Space Odyssey-like, at, at the Red Rocks in, um, in the desert. And nobody knows where it has come from. Apparently, though, it's, it's near where a lot of movies get shot. Wilden, the disk drive makes a little noise here and there, but it's quiet for most of the time. I actually haven't even put in a disk into this thing. I should check it out just to make sure it's working. Uh, I haven't thrown in a Blu-ray or any any games. All the games that I have are digital. Okay, so we're just gonna get into the game. I don't I don't think we need the story, and I don't think this is any enhancements whatsoever. But 3D games were made 20 years ago, so uh, let's play this three-dimensional adventure. 25 years ago. Kevin Smitty, yours is quite noisy when you put a disc in and check for a game. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna answer this phone. Oh, you see that? There's some issues on the on the interface. <laughs> Everybody has a British accent. The, I don't think that the audio was recorded in the UK. I'm pretty sure this was recorded in Los Angeles. And everybody's using a British accent. But we have some people that are from the UK in the uh, in the chat right now. Let me know if you think the accents on the uh, the actors are all right. Okay, so I gotta I gotta hit I gotta whack my monkey and then catch him. Gotta whack the monkey and then catch him. Yeah, it's uh, it's freaking out a little bit. Got one. I got a trophy, guys. All right, here we go. I'm not from the UK, but the accent sounded good. Okay, Miss Ojet. Huge emulation issues on that game. Yeah, I can see it. I did want to say whack the monkey. Ooh. I don't know if we're going to keep playing this. It seems to be pretty... Pretty buggy. I kind of do want to play it, though. This game is pretty cool. It's, uh, I don't know, there's probably a lot of the same devs, a lot of the same um, e ethos that worked on uh, Astrobot. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised if some of the same people worked on it. This, this game was crafted to show off the, uh, uh, the DualShock controller for the PlayStation 2, the dual analog controller. Did they make... I think they made the first one was on PlayStation 1, though, right? Because that's the first DualShock that came out. So it's the same kind of philosophy that Sony's had. And Nintendo as well. I mean, Mario was almost... 64 was almost... Uh, uh, you know, it was, it was supposed to represent how 
amazing analog controls were with the N64 controller. That thing is punishing to use, by the way, now. I thought it was amazing back then. The flickering is di distracting. Okay, let's uh, let's check out NHL 94, the new state-of-the-art NHL 94. <laughs> uh, we'll just quit right out of there. And let's jump into this. Um, I'm going to pop on the... Uh, I'm take off the music, though, because I think they'll probably throw in some licensed track. EA always does that. Um, okay. Woohoo! Eric J, this is for you! Sony needs to add backwards compatibility with the PlayStation 1, PS2, and PS3 games. 100%. I think they might, you guys. Look at this huge online thing for... <laughs> oh, man. Uh, I'm just going to... I don't think they put anything private up on the uh, screen there, but just to be safe, I'm just going to go... So this is, this is a shot of me looking at the privacy terms. Okay. Okay, we're playing. All right, here we go. Uh, picture in picture. Boop. And we're going to go right to there. Um... crazy we got to be vancouver right so the, these are this is the classic game let's play let's play vancouver boston with uh with the modern players crazy the music is Sony says that the answer for the Game Pass may be an emulation and paying for those as a service. Kevin Smitty. Hmm. All right. Resume game. Resume game. How do we go? Okay. Start. Crazy. <laughs> okay, here we go. Oh. Oh, that was a pretty good slap shot. This looks great. <laughs> oh! I was going in for the one-timer right there. I was going in for one, Brad. Ah. Uh. Oh, BS. Portal player. It does talking about the dual sense. The dual sense is not being utilized at all by the way in this game, but <laughs> there is no rumble at all. Uh but it is an incredible controller. I really do like it. Feels weird to have a PlayStation controller that's larger than an Xbox controller, though. I haven't got my one timers down yet. What was that? Nope. Oh! Yeah, it's modern players with the 94 uh, skin. But it does feel like 94. We were playing some uh, NHL 95 when I streamed NHL 21 for the first time on the PlayStation 4 Pro. That old thing. It still weirds me out that I have the Spider-Man PS4 Pro, of course I do, uh, and I was I I love it, and I was so elated when I when it came to the house and and uh, it became my PlayStation, um, and now it's just under the it's like it's on a shelf, it's just, it's just packed away. It's like nope, you don't even need it. It's so weird. Same with the the Xbox One, which was a great machine too. Don't even need it. 
nuts. Okay, uh, I think we get it. Nothing ever feels as long as the original Xbox Duke controller. Vic, when was the last time you checked out the latest No Man's Sky? I'm sorry, Delta. I popped out. I was talking. Um, okay, let's play um, Spider-Man 2018 in 60 frames per second. Does that sound all right? Let's play. Haven't played much. Uh, Kevin Smitty, I have it on here. Let's check out No Man's Sky after this. Oh, I'm going to turn the, uh, I think there's licensed music right away. So you can tell that it loads up super fast, right? Portal player, this is the PlayStation 5. It's this machine. It's this honking thing. This is not uh, like a scale model. This is actually what we're using. Um, I think I put that way down there because I'm going to import my save. I've been thinking I am, but I've basically started over again, which I'm fine with. Let's go. Of course, I still talk with Scott. I was just chatting with him the other day. He's doing great. Um, I'm going to put the music on I'm gonna put the uh, I'm gonna turn the music off just one second here settings I don't think there's too much licensed music but just to be safe all right you guys ready oh we're in um, performance mode yeah okay 60 frames per second spider-man here we go guys Uh, I miss Scott too. I wish he was in Vancouver. If he was in Vancouver, we would uh, we would still be getting together. You guys would see him on in front of the camera. I would drag his ass out in front of the camera. He would be like, no, no, I don't want to know, no. And then I'd get him out there. I can't really do that when he's in Toronto. So I just got evicted. Yeah. Oh my god, I love this game so much. You guys don't understand. Blair Farrell understands. Like I'm, I am, um, I'm playing through Miles. M Miles Morales right now is my game for fun. I've, I've already beat it. I know all the details on it because I, I beat it when I had the PS4 uh, Pro code, and uh, so I'm just savoring it on the PS5. And I play like a an hour a, a day just to. Just to check it out, you know, just to see all the the details. But I rarely do that with games because um, I'm fortunate enough that I, I, the the job is to review stuff, so I'm I'm always looking at new things. But that's just such a hard thing for me to. I was like that with the Arkham games too. It's just such a hard thing for me to just like turn it off and then bye. I'll set my earpiece to focus on muffled voices. And so I've got both of these Spider-Man games. Installed on this machine, and uh, they call to me. So maybe every stream from now on will be me playing Spider-Man game. <laughs> Is that all right, you guys? <laughs> uh, all right, let's go do this mission. I just love getting around. I mean, that's that's why I love these games. It's just fun to just tootle, you know. I love just going down to the ground, and uh, I think I can. Oh, on the uh, on Miles Morales, you can see who is going to give you a high five. On this one, you can't. I just like running by everybody. How's it going? I'm Spider Man. Hello. Let's see what's in here. Oh, cool. I don't even think I did that before. That's pretty rad. Okay, uh, let's go cruise around. Hello, parking meter. It's just so clean. Even at 1080p. Well, I guess it runs at 1080p when it's in 60 frames per second. All right, let's go. Let's go do this mission. Oh, I'm totally cool with the face change, pathetic Earthling. Understand why they did it. Um, he felt a little old in uh, in the original release, and I think this one. Uh, 
it gives the the developers time to kind of evolve the character, right? So, I mean, they're gonna they're gonna be making Spider Man games for a while. I am losing patience. Where is the file? <laughs> John Boko, yeah. They must have taken it. Those masks. Who are these guys? There's no, no Delta Charlie. This is only the performance mode's only available on PS5. And I, there's no way for PS4 Pro players to get the remastered Spider-Man currently. You have to buy the Ultimate Edition of Spider-Man Miles Morales. Copy that. Sending units your way. Keep the situation from getting worse in the meantime. Can do. Lee Fan B, that's what it feels like. But there's some wisdom in that, in the change-up. And I think it really comes down to... Uh, um, the fact that they're going to be running with this character for a long time. We're going to see him age over time, and I'm totally cool with that. It's, I mean, they're so photo real at this point, right? Like, they're, they're, that character is going to live with us for a while. And clearly what this sets up is not only sequels for Miles and more Peter Parker games, but also cooperative Spider-Man games. I, I wouldn't be surprised to see that becoming a uh, a huge feature that gets announced. Um, so aim at the floor. What do I have to do? Oh, I got to lure him. Okay. Okay. So I'm still kind of in early days here. They're training me. Uh, it it feels um, Bryant Mitchell. It feels the same, but it feels like I. Like, I put glasses on to start playing it, you know? And it's not like the original was bad-looking at all. It's a gorgeous game on PS4. Uh, and Pro is where I played it. But there is something um, just hyper-clean. And 60 frames per second is... Especially, at, uh, I play on an OLED TV. And the uh, fidelity mode is great with all the reflections and the surfaces and all that stuff. It's really lovely. But the performance mode, it's like... You, you, it's almost like you're playing an animated uh, experience. Hold on one sec. Uh, uh oh, I screwed up. Um, it's it, it. It's like you have this animation. It's like Roger Rabbit. You have this animation against this photo real background, and it's all running super clean, super fast. It's amazing. Uh, okay, let's get up there. I actually really like the stealth mission. Spider-Man's uh, very conducive to some cool stealth mechanics. And, uh, you know, Miles is even better with that because he has the ability to go uh, invisible. Okay, so they're really they're teaching me the fundamentals here. Okay. Um, okay. I'm holding it. Yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> I've been trying to do that. <laughs> so it tells you when it's safe. It gives you a little indicator right there. I wonder if I have any new uh, suits. I do. Okay. Um, oh yeah. I like the, I just like the basic one. Right? Hey, what is that? Cool. This totally belongs to... Don't move! Buddy, if I had a nickel for every don't move... Oh, is that true, Tunde Abimbola? There's a, an investigation at Amazon UK. Oh my God! What are you doing here? I, I mean, I we were talking about that. How hard these things are to find. And I wouldn't doubt it. There's some people that really took advantage of the situation. The demand was huge, and and uh, yeah, there are a lot of really petty, scummy people out there that uh, that just don't understand. And it wasn't a break-in until a few minutes ago. Uh huh. Let me explain. Uh, uh, Glenn, I have conversations all the time, but the television business is very different than it was even five years ago. Um, I would like that. I would like that very much. Um, and if I find 
you guys will all know. I'll let everybody know as soon as I know. Um, but if I find the right partner, Excuse and I've said me. this before, if I find the right partner, Hi, um, Watson, I'm covering the they'd be getting Hello. an amazing archive and a ton of history I, and experience I, I and uh, a lot of great relationships. Well, I don't. But I would to welcome the opportunity right. to okay. you know, put together the best team covering this business on earth. I think I did that before. And, hey, uh, you know, I was very lucky with the people no, that I was sorry, able to just, bring into EP. Like and I would really like the opportunity to do that again. Because I feel like I know, uh, we've been off the air for a long time and there's really been nothing that has come close to, um, you know and I don't mean to offend any other properties or brands or the way anybody else approaches it, but we did something very special. And, and uh, I'm, I'm aware of it. And the people that I've worked with before are aware of it. Um, and I would welcome the opportunity to do more of that because I, I feel like there's a need, around, you know, uh, but I don't make those decisions uh, and budgets are different and, and choices are more complex and complicated than they were back then. Um, but just know I communicate with people and we talk about things and who knows. I remember when Fisk started illegally importing artifacts like this. <laughs> well, whatever happens, Kevin, um, I I was aware of this when we were on television and TV was our first, you know, uh, well, I'll, I'll be frank, like we started on the web, right? The Electric Playground website launched in 95. And we were one of the first video game websites out there and we were, you know, cranking out content uh, in a massive way and we actually our website grew quite large we had a pretty big staff for the web and one of the cool things about our business back then was how we were kind of looking towards the future where television and the web were really going to complement each other but we were a little early with those ideas um, because of you know the video servicing and all that stuff was quite expensive at that time there was not a, there was no YouTube we predated YouTube um, and then YouTube happened and it just exploded in a bunch of different verticals. But I always felt like they need to coexist and uh, you can't you can't cut off one to just focus on the other. So if something happens through television, I, I guarantee you that um, this platform here and our web platform and and the other services out there that that uh, would serve up our content, all going to be hugely important if something like that happens. Um, and I love live streaming as well. There's just something so beautiful and pure about this kind of uh, conversational platform here, you know, that we get to do this like this. Starting with the prize, a one-of-a-kind Kake Monbaku. Oh, beautiful. All right. It's a Mifune? Correct. Mr. Fisk has... Exceptional uh, Goat in 1986. I did see that yesterday, and I was very impressed. It was uh, clearly a tremendous amount of effort in the production, and I like the look of it, and I like the performances by everybody. It was funny, and uh, it was it was uh, super cool. And and Austin Creed, uh, who's the new announced host, I didn't really know his work. I mean, I'd seen him on I follow him on Twitter and stuff, but I hadn't really seen a lot of his stuff. Uh, but he really charmed me. I thought he he was uh, a great addition to whatever the new G4 is going to be. Exemplifies the traditional Tarashikomi puddled ink effect. The two Neo are so imposing. Um, am I going to be streaming the Game Awards? I hadn't actually planned that. I guess I have to start thinking about that. I haven't done that before. Is it Xavier Woods? Xavier Woods, not Austin Creed. Who's Austin Creed? <laughs> Is that who I said? <laughs> That's Xavier. Okay. Do take a photo, please. Ah, basement gaming. Cool. Yeah, I, I'm not familiar with the guy, but he charmed me on uh, on that G4 video. Now, who is Austin Creed? Xavier Woods is his wrestling name. Oh, my God. Are you kidding me? Tunde Abimbola? Like, like that's just going to screw with my head. Austin Creed and Xavier Woods are the same person? Oh, man. 
Okay, I feel like I got high. That's nuts. I did take a picture. Am I going to keep doing it? Okay, I got it. All right. anything irregular in any of the sales you handled for him? No. Whisperienced is here. No, of, of course not. Dude has a PhD, not mad respect. <laughs> Victor Creed, also Sabretooth's cousin. Yes, that's me. <laughs> what would my wrestling name be, Nosferatu? Uh, uh, you know, I would be, uh, I would be like counter programming in wrestling. I would be, uh, I think, I would try to be like uh, a stealthy spy and uh, a name that I came up with when I was a kid, writing short stories. In uh, I don't know when I first started thinking about how cool James Bond was. I came up with these two characters, uh, Nigel Sterling and, I don't know, Jake Silver or something like Sterling Silver. Uh, so Nigel Sterling would be my, and I'd have a British accent, and I would come in in a tuxedo, and then I would kill everybody with my karate moves. That was terrible. Um, but it would be very different than... Uh, I wouldn't be like a Hulk Hogan, brother. I wouldn't be like that. There's enough of those guys. Your readers would have any interest in. Damn it! Wait here, please. <laughs> Badass Russian character. Victor Von Doom, Kevin I Smithy. That statue. I gotta get a photo. That shouldn't be here. Hello. <laughs> this is not the best part of Spider-Man to stream. Um, manual save. This the photo mode. I mean, it's cool that it's in here, but this is like quiet time stream stuff. So or twi quiet time uh, gaming. So let's play um, No Man's Sky. You guys want to see No Man's Sky on PlayStation Five? We're not going to get the full fidelity clearly because we're in. Um, uh, oh, I, you know what? This will be interesting. I did this with uh, Stadia the other day. Um, I streamed a streaming game and played through the service. This is a game I have to stream through PlayStation Now. Let's see if this works. Um, let's see. Good to see you, Eyal Lantzman. Good to see you. Skylar Denning, the MJ parts are the worst. I like them because they break up the uh, the routines of what you're, what you're doing. Um, but uh, yeah, they don't compare with the action pack moments in there. EP should be on the same level as IGN and GameSpot. There is a ton of people like me that grew up with reviews on the run. Well, we, we've been in that position, Glenn. Um, you know, but uh, we were so, uh, like all of our budgeting was so predicated on our television presence and we just didn't uh, pivot as everybody was moving to digital. And we should have, uh, but we also should have been partnered with... Um, uh, and this, I'm not tr throwing any uh, shade at anybody here, but our, our, our broadcast partner should have understood that and worked with us in that capacity. Because uh, we figured out a lot of stuff that people are still trying to figure out. Um, and we could have really taken advantage of it all. Uh, but it didn't, didn't work out that way. But who says that it can't again? Oh, experience. thank you. Streams in my stream. Yes, this is Inception video gaming right here. So uh, I am I'm patched in, wired into the PlayStation Five. We're going to stream a PlayStation Three game through PlayStation Now. Uh, it worked, but I could definitely see artifacts on the uh, the television. And I had checked this out in um, on PlayStation Three not too long ago. But of course, I was running this to a 4K TV. And that might have been part of the dilemma is that it was upscaling everything and so I could see the dithering and things. Uh, but this is um, a fantastic racing game. I don't know if any of you guys remember this thing. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Oh, Nosferatu, it was awful. It was weird. That was the first time that that happened, though. Skylar Denning, what is a Cub Reporter? That's I, I think that's something out of the out of the fifties. They would call like Jimmy Olsen the Cub Reporter, Jimmy Olsen Superman's buddy, Clark Kent's buddy in the Daily Planet. Um, I'd heard the term somewhere, and I, I um, you know, when I, when we started EP, it, I was never thinking of myself as like a like a host. I I was uh, 
I was just going to be a conduit to these developers, you know, and it took uh, being on the show and working with di uh, broadcasters like di uh, Discovery that they really pushed me to up my presence as a as a host. And uh, I learned a lot through all that. Okay, hold on. Figuring out the controls. Okay, I'm going to turn the music off. Can I? There we go. All right. Options. One second. DJ Shadow D and B Remix. Okay. Okay. Oh, you can take photos. That's so cool. Okay, here we go. Oh, and I'll turn the audio for you guys. Here we go. Okay, so um, I don't know if you guys remember this franchise on the PlayStation 3. This is running pretty good, actually. Um, but it was just a, like a collection of anything goes type vehicles. And in this particular franchise, which had the unfortunate reality of launching just after the huge earthquake in uh, 2011 that happened in Japan where lots of people died. It was terrible. Um, and this came out that year, around the same time. I think it was 2011. And uh, so, I think it was delayed because of that. And then the marketing all had to be shifted. And, and uh, But it's for me, it's easily the best of the um, motorsport, motorstorm games because not only do you have the chaos of, uh, you know, the environment to deal with, but there are actually mutants and gang members and stuff shooting at you from the sides of the road. And then the big cool mechanic here is that you'll be driving along and there'll be earthquakes that happen and, and the topography completely shifts and changes as you're driving up to it. It was really impressive. And another cool thing with this game is that you actually could play it in 3D if you had the, uh, the glasses and the TV set for it. And it, it worked pretty good in 3D. And this is okay. It's streaming all right. Feels like I have control of it. Oh. Oh, there's some choppiness. Oh, there's some lagginess. That might be my kid on Roblox right now. If I can recall correctly, Danny Johnson, it was always Tommy that was pushing us to review horse racing games. And I, I wanted no part of that. But we did review horse racing games and fishing games. They always put me to sleep. Fishing games, I, I just never got that. Uh, no offense to people that love them, but I was like, what? I, I, this is nuts. It's so boring. I'm in, oh, 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 I was looking up. I'm looking at every part of the screen except the road. Okay. Looks pretty good, huh? Whoa! <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, looks pretty good, huh? Murder. Okay. I got a motor storm card. It's pretty cool that I can just jump in. I have this game. I, I mean, I would prefer to be able to walk over to the the shelf that this game exists on, grab the game, and pop it into my PlayStation 5, and it'd be enhanced. Uh, but it's pretty cool that I can just access it on a server in California, and I'm running it right now. And I'm probably the only person on Earth that is playing this right now. I can guarantee... And would somebody please do this? Will someone see if anyone else is streaming MotorStorm Apocalypse on either YouTube or Twitch right now? It is easier than getting up and walking 10 feet. It is Delta Charlie. Okay, so that, that, oh, 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 there we go, okay. I'm still in position two, okay. There's a little bit of lag. Wow, Mr. Mass played but picked up Bloodborne for ten bucks. That's great. I found some cards. Just me. I thought so, hip hop Dan. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Okay. Uh, well, that is uh, a PlayStation Now game on PlayStation 5. 
That's interesting. Okay. I'm not saving anything, so I don't know what happens. Okay, so um, you guys tell me uh, what's the what's the next game, and um, this this will be the last game that we're gonna play. So you guys tell me. So I've got Bug Snacks, NBA, uh, Mortal Kombat, D Demon Souls. Let's see, what do we want? Try a disc. Sh should I go and grab a disc? Demon Souls, Bug Snacks, Demon Souls. Yeah, close it. Uh, Demon Souls, Demon Souls, Demon Souls. Okay, we're gonna play some Demon Souls. Let's do it. No, not all of them are updated. Marina Gold. Um, uh, there is PlayStation's. It was a little confusing when we first got this. When I first got this in, I couldn't tell what version of what game I was playing. Um, like the whether it was a PlayStation Four game or a PlayStation Five game, but they've become a little bit clearer over the last little while. This is going to be a pain. Uh, this game is so amazing. It's so beautiful. I'm not good, but um, I'm getting there. Game is hard. Yes, it is. I have heard of Rebel Galaxy Outlaws. I think I... Um, I think I looked at it, but I, I didn't play it. Like, I, I think I downloaded it to something and checked it out for a minute, but I didn't really play it. Okay. I have to kind of remember how to play everything here. One second. Okay. Oh, son of a bitch. Just, okay, get behind these guys. Ouch! Get out of there, get out of there! Oh, man. Okay, okay, okay. Oh. Okay. I beefed up my sword a little bit back in the Nexus, which was helpful. Ah, uh, Wisperience, thank you so much. Thank you for the super chat. Keep up the awesome streams, and folks, if you haven't liked this video, uh, do like the video. Yes, I appreciate all the likes and the thumbs ups, and uh, also very much the shares. And uh, thank you to everybody that's checking us out for the very first time. It's awesome that you're here. Um, and uh, of course, the super chats and, and, uh, and the new members. Really, really kind. Thank you. Um, this person is useless, or that person is useless. <laughs> Are they talking about me? Okay, here we go. Oh, oh, uh oh. Let's go get this guy. You gotta kill all the slime. That's the rule in Demon Souls. All of it. Kill it. Oh, you son of a bitch. Okay, let's get back here. Oh, oh, oh. It's very hard to get the sword. Swinging in this tight corner. Okay, get back. Get back here. Eat this. Okay. Get this. No, oops. Pick this up. Pick it up. Ah! What was that, Vic? I need to get it. go get the Cres Crescent Fashion 1 to make these early areas. Oh, I need to get the Crescent... Crescent, Falchion one plus one. Okay, thank you for the for the advice. Oops, I keep pressing the square button. What do I have? I have the um, I have the bastard sword and uh, scimitar. Got rid of some different ones. I don't think I have uh, better armor. Oh, 
Oh, I did get a little bit of better armor. Okay. I'm very early in the game still. I've been bouncing from game to game, talking about stuff, streaming stuff. Um, but this is one that uh, I am definitely going to sink a lot of time into because I am I just adore it. It's so fun. And it's gorgeous. Here comes this dragon. Run for your freaking life. Run. Oh, I still have some health. Oh, my God. That was close. Eat that. Go. Run. He's coming back. Run. Oh, my Lord. First time I saw one of those dragons, I thought, okay, I, how do you how do you get by these guys? They're impossible. I didn't know that you can get burned a little bit and then carry on. Let's get one of these guys. Okay. Oh. No. Gotcha. Okay. Run right after he breathes fire. Okay, thank you, Kevin Smitty. Am I making you nervous? We're just running around, bouncing off walls and stuff? Um... Here's my buddy. Oops. Sorry, pal. Okay. Got all this stuff. Nigel Sterling. <laughs> EP fan. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, they. I had them, but I've I've been through this area, and of course I've died. So I've start I've started over. Man, makes me wish we had a new age of uh, ghosts and goblins games. Oh, Nosferatu! What a great callback. That's a great idea. Like a remake of that classic story, where you could. Play demon demon souls, but you can get bashed into your underwear. That'd be crazy. Your armor starts falling off, and then you're in your ginch running around for a bit. That'd be great. Demon souls with a sense of humor. <laughs> oh, oh yes. I was not reading the chat at the right time. I might be dying here. I'm dead. I'm dead. Okay. <laughs> I, I looked at the chat. Going to play that Ubisoft game, Gods and Monsters? I sure am. Yes, I've got that. Uh, I'm going to check it out on both PlayStation and Xbox. Um, but uh, that that's kind of next in the pipe. And I think I can stream it soon. So stay tuned for that. Um, but uh, that's going to do it for our uh, VIX basement today. Let's go to full screen. Uh, thank you all so much for watching. Thank you for uh, cheering me on as I, I get my ass handed to me in uh, uh, Demon Souls. Char Delta Charlie, Vic, I know you're working hard. You make it look easy. Don't forget to make time for your family. Oh, thank you so much. You're so right. Um, that, that's actually what I'm going to go do right now. I've got some uh, grocery shopping to do with, with the kiddo. Uh, but I appreciate it so much that you're here. Um, I, uh, I think I'm back tomorrow. Uh, watch my Twitter. Uh, I still want to do a gift guide around um, PC and VR and stuff like that. Um, so I, I will confirm very soon, but I'll be streaming again very soon for sure. Uh, and I, I sure appreciate everybody being here. Thank you so much for supporting EPN. We will see you soon. And until then, play forever.